Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, good day all. Welcome along. Uh, I'll just answer a question before I put sit and put it all on the full screen. So that, to Axel, about another 35 years, mate. <laughs> <laughs> then they can use two chisels. Right. I'm going full screen, so Simmons and Jay, if you'd like to look after it, please. Yeah. Right, Adam. Get your get a tape measure. Yes. From the bottom of the leg. Fifty yeah. mil. Mark yeah. a line, put a line there. Fifty. Then come up then come up to two hundred and twenty. No, extend the tape measure all the way out. Oh, you want me to use a tape measure? Okay. Well two twenty, did you say? Yeah, two twenty. Yeah. Then yeah. Then at two fifty. Yeah, what have you done there? You no, you've got a line in the wrong place somewhere. Fifty. You, no, you measured yeah, fifty fifty, then two twenty, two fifty. Oh, from the bottom. All these measurements from the bottom, right? All measurements come from the base, yes. Because that's the only thing that's common on is where we stand on the ground. There you go. Right, we're good. These, right, these double messes, they're messes. Right, yeah. right. Now, on those, on those two lines in the middle, the ones that are, are 250 and 220, put yep. a 3 8 or 10 millimetre deep V cut. With the skew tool. Do not use a parting tool. Sorry, so this one, the first one at 50. No, come up to the next two. one, the yeah, two yeah. centre one. Three eighths, yeah. Yep, V cut. Yeah, that's okay. It. Sorry, Rob, I'll, I'll just be a couple of minutes to get Adam up to where we are, all right? Yeah, apologies, guys. Sorry on this one. No, no problem at all. It's a bit of a recap, I guess, Robbo. If I want to play and try to pretend that it's... Uh... <laughs> there we go. Right, there we go, I think. Right. Now you've got to make your pommel cut up here. Okay. Just have a look. Have a look at where my finger is. So what you're doing, that 15 mil mark that you put there, it's yep. a straight line. You've got to put, you've got to make that bit in there three eighths of an inch deep as well. Yeah. All right. So right. keep that on the 80 mil line. So you yep. angle the chisel out that way. So yep. you get a straight edge down here. Yeah. And get that three eighths of an inch deep as well. Right, yeah. Right. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Now, from your 15 mil line, you've got to make a cut straight down there, all right, with the long point of the chisel. So you creep up on that 15 mil line. Start about, just get the corner out of the way first. And it's just yeah. a straight line. It looks like Adam's going straight in. It should be at more of an angle. Sorry, what's that, Rob? I'm not sure. Adam's going too 
Yeah, don't go too, don't go, Adam, don't go too deep because you've got about three quarters of an inch. I think you needed to be more than angle. So you. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Okay, yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. Right. Now, sorry, Rob, what were you saying? Apologies, I shouldn't have interrupted. I was worried in case I thought Adam might have been going in to, to that way instead of that way. Yeah, I've got. I don't think you're wrong, Rob. I think I've got one more cut, and that's um, just to get me to no. the fifteen. Right, where where's the eighty mil line? It looks like you've crept down towards the base of the leg with it. See ya. Yeah, that's right. That should be oh, gone. No. No, sorry, that's the 15. That's the 80 here at the bottom of this. Right here? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, it makes a the, difference. That was the um, 65 mil line. Yeah, is where the corners of right the bottle are now. Yeah. Yeah, right out. Okay. Okay, this is what you're going to do next. Well, basically, it is just uh, beads, okay? Okay. And a, a cove in here. So. First of all, I'll put myself up on full screen. And those of you that are new to the, um, this sort of chat, I'm sorry, we don't acknowledge everybody that's coming in or out. Um, Just before you start, Rob, over there, uh, yeah. Landy, Landy is doing what you're doing offline. So I'm, I'm going to monitor the Facebook Messenger in case she has a question for you. So she can't get up yeah. online, but she's doing it alongside in parallel. Yeah, all right. Okay. I'll wait until Adam gets up. Yeah, yeah, cool. I'm done. I'm watching. Right out. Yeah. So, there's a long point here. You've got to pour me a fill it on this one. Okay, and then there's a long bead there. Pour the other side of the fill it. What's going on with this view? And now, this is a really sharp, it's not actually a bead as such, it's a really sharp curve. Down in the base. Right, get that done now. Okay, so I'm a, a bead into this one. Okay. What well, I can't see you, I'm on full screen. So. Yeah, yeah. A long bead there. It's got to be longer than that, Adam. Longer. Yeah. Okay. So Landy's asking how deep are the grooves? Three eighths of an inch or ten millimeters, Landy. So I've done that, and then. That then you've got to form your fillets there. Your little, just take it down on an angle. Taper down. There, have a, have a look at my screen. Don't like it? Like now that? that's a, yeah, that'll do. Now the other side. Same. Yep. Right, Rob, that's that's a sharp little corner in that one. It's very ah, not quite a bead. Yeah, 
Yeah, don't don't keep making it too deep, Adam, no. or you'll be in trouble. Yeah. Right. Now you've got to round this edge over here. Yeah. Round the basically, basically the top there. edge. There. Well, you got to do that one, but you've got to do the one at the long section of the leg too. No, back here. Towards the tail stock here. Okay, okay, yeah. That's all right. Left and right. Don't know. It helps if you know you're left and right, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's got, to, be it's got to be long. It's got to be. It's got to be longer than that. Yeah, now round over the top of your bars, up towards your, your square section there. Yeah, that's got to be rounded over, okay. down in but, here. But steeper. But it's very sharp, yeah. Okay. Now you can see why you don't go too deep there, otherwise you destroy the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Let's see what a mess I've left behind. Don't forget that everybody can see you two up there. <laughs> Ooh. Right. <laughs> just Sorry. just use the just use the short point, Adam, not the whole chisel. You're trying to peel it out, and it's not a peeling cut. Okay. That's looking no. good, Rob. Okay, now, spindle nice gouge. Yep. Your half in spindle gouge next. <coughs> okay. I'll just go on full screen again. Just watch what I'm doing. So the first thing is the hair. Now, it is a cove, but it's a steep. It almost goes down straight until you start curving it out. And you've got to take it down so it looks right to the depth that you have down here. <laughs> the next one is this one. This is a pure cove. All right, get them done next. Just be careful, Adam, that you do not decrease the diameter at the top of the bars there where it's underneath the square. Yeah. Has there been any questions or anything yet, Sid? No, nah, they're all behaving right. themselves so far, Robbo. Ben's not in here right, yet either, so. Oh, that's true. Okay, you, can wide, you can widen that out a little bit, uh, Rob. Down towards the tail stock, you can go a little bit further towards the tail stock. That's it. But just don't make it any deeper than what the cut under the pommel is. Okay. 
Now your fillet should be about three millimeters wide, all right? An eighth of an inch. That's good, Rob. Right out. Now I'm just going to have to get you to go back a little bit, Rob, after you've completed that cove. Right. Just have a look at the camera for a minute, Rob, so you can see my finger. <coughs> just lengthen that, lengthen that bead out there, that half bead. Just lengthen it out. Okay. Uh, and on the vase as well, all right? Yes, will do. On this one here. Just take your time. That's better. Start curving it around there now until you come onto that fillet. That looks better. On that one, Rob, just come back a little bit, come back a little bit towards the headstock. Yeah, come back a bit more towards the headstock and just start it there. But don't take any off the rest of it. When you get about halfway down, don't remove any more. That's it. That's looking better. Good. Right. Okay, on with the next bit. Just have a slurp on me cup of tea. <coughs> All right, going up on full screen. This is the next bit. What we're going to do now is round this bit to blend in with the bead of the uh, cove, at least on the bottom. Like that. Well, that looked easy. It is. <laughs> Now watch out, uh, are you using a gouge or a, a skew chisel there, Adam? Uh, it will go. No, use your skew chisel, please. It all looks okay. Yeah, yeah, that'll be all right. Well, there's controversy in the chat now with Adam cheating with the spindle gouge. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Don't worry. He's going to get his privileges withdrawn if he's not careful.
No. Now, you can see, Rob, it's actually a ball. It's like a ball there. So you've got to come back. Yeah. So you've got to start virtually from the middle there and form a ball there, all right? Just checking yeah. the boat. Do I need to go deeper on the, on the cords? Or, or should I be no, going no, to... no. They're, they're just, right. Just they're right. Just, yeah. Yeah. yeah, start a bit more in the middle of there. That's right. right. Yep. Okay. okay. All right. I'll do the same. That's looking better, Rob. Now, don't take any out of the bottom of it, just... Right. Okay, now the easy one. Set a pair of calipers at 40 mil. Right. You right there, Adam? Yeah. I can count to four just about. One, two, three, four. Right, 40 mil, yeah. Right. Now get your power. I'll, I'll do the first one just to show you. Go up on full screen again. Now, as I've said to others before, there's times when you now. It doesn't matter if you take that line out, but what I prefer to do with a parting tool if I'm making a parting cut is come right back into the waist on the. Right, so always remember to give a release cut. So you come out another half. Make an incision there to get it to that size. So you're below the 50 mil line there, aren't you, Robbo? My yeah, you come into the waist section. Okay. If you start here, you'll run into trouble. Can you zoom your camera back a little bit, please, Adam? Okay. Yeah, I'll have to do it the old way. Two seconds. All right. Let me turn, let me turn the lathe off so I don't get dragged around it. Is that zoomed out enough? Yeah, that'll do. Good. Right out. Trying to find the... No, I've just moved again. Yeah, I'm trying to just... Um, Got to go. There. Got to go towards the tail stop end of fraction. Is that good enough? Uh, I'd prefer another couple of inches, said she. Oh, dear. Right, that's good. Right, leave it there. And, and that was live as well. Hey, Robbo. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's all just a bit. There we go. Is that better? Right. right. 
I tried. I was trying to hide my mistakes by uh, having it off camera, right? No, so. no, we've seen you doing it with the wrong tool. Do it again. Take that piece out. <laughs> <laughs> Just make sure that your parting tool is wider than what your calipers are. Uh, wider. Make sure your calipers are narrower than your parting tool, all right? Did you? <laughs> yes, good, good call. Good call. Right. This is a trap. Radio. Okay. That'll do. Right out. Switch off and look at look at what I'm doing now. Using the spindle roughing gouge. Take this down to the forty mil. And you can creep up onto that 50 mil line. Like so. Doesn't matter if it doesn't get exactly smooth. The, the, the tool work was actually muffling out your voice sometimes there, Robbo. Yeah. Yeah, it's got a good uh, sound suppression in this one, I think. Turn the spindle roughing gouge up so it's perfectly vertical. The edges are lined up straight, straight, rotated anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise. More, 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 more. That's about it. Right. Okay. It's got to be right on its edge. Okay. On mine, it's a parabolic end, so that means that it's not, it's not flat, if you know what I mean. No, I don't know what you mean. At, at vertical, at vertical, it's kind of curved round, whereas just back from vertical, say at the top edge is pointing to one o'clock. That's when this yeah, becomes right. flat well, against the rest. Get the, get the top edge at 12 o'clock. Okay. Cool. It's exactly the same. It's exactly the same as mine. So stand, rotate it to the left. Otherwise, you can't get up to that edge square. I get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Just straighten it up more, Adam. Turn it round to the left. Right. Spin I'm it. You. I promise my brain is doing something different. Yeah, right. Well, listen to me, not your brain. <laughs> Stand it up. Stand it up so that you cannot see the bottom edge, basically. That way. That right way. There. That way you. That way you'll get a square cut. Okay. Okay. What happened there? Lost Robocop for a minute, he'll come back in, I dare say. He just sent a message, his laptop's crashed in two minutes. Okay. Okay. 
Oh, look at that. Right, I haven't I'm gone just, too far. It's just a bit... Yeah, that's all right. Right here. Mm. I'll, I'll just, just have a rest for a second while we wait for Rob to get back in. I still can't believe none of you guys like cricket. What's that all about? I eh? thought that was all you guys oh. did apart from wood turning. In oh, I love cricket, mate. It's a bloody good no, game, mate. Right. It's all good. They're not, oh. they're not Aussies if they don't like cricket. Oh, Sorry. interesting. <laughs> yeah, I don't like cricket. It's just oh, rock get out of here. Go on. On your bike, Sonny. <laughs> I reckon the best thing I did for cricket was the 2020 matches. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I love them. They're great. I, I, I the women disagree. players are all right, too. The 100's pretty good. That's even shorter, Robbo, if you like short games. <laughs> yeah. Right. Now, I'll go back on full screen again now. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the next little trick. Using your spindle roughing gouge, get rid of the waste from about an inch away from where your curve is there. And just cut it straight. Now don't undercut here or you're going to be in trouble. And leave a little bit of a line just above where you 50 mil mark or so you get to pick it up like that. All right, there you go. Right. God, look at Rob roughing out. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. You still sort of look like a carrot by the time you finish. Now make sure you don't go make sure you don't cut the 50 mil line out. Robo, Robo, I reckon uh, RoboCop's actually got his on four times speed. <laughs> he might have too. That'll do, that'll do, Rob. Don't worry too much about it. Bit further back. Did that feel good, no, Rob? That's, that's all right. Just need to take a bit more off the bottom there, uh, Adam. It did, Sid. Yes. <laughs> Where? You want me to go? Okay. Sorry. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I just need a little line there, basically. Rightio, just give us half a second. Now with your skew chisel, where that 50 mil line was down here, I won't put it on full screen, go three eighths of an inch deep again. No, it's a V cut. You've got to go in on a V cut. So long point down, pick up the line, then widen it out. So about eight to ten millimetres deep. Right, 18, 18 mil deep's not three eighths of an inch, is it? No, eight to ten millimetres deep. Five sixteen ah. to three eight, Dave. Cool. So three three eights. Okay, ten mil. Yeah. Let's just speak bloody Australia. <laughs> One day. Okay. 
Rightio. Now there, do what you did up there on the cove and form a fillet. Like this. Oh, that's good, Rob. Yeah, that's not bad, Adam. Good. Right, now whenever you've got a shape like this, I'll go on a full screen. Just have a look. Where you've got a shape going down like that, we're going to get a uh, spindle gouge. Now, don't start down in here, start on the high side. What we're going to do is put a bit of a cove in here, all right? If you try to start down on the low side here, you're running into the timber and you're likely to get a catch. So that's the next stage. And don't make it too deep. It's only about a quarter. It's only about three mil deep. The cove part, I mean. It should line up with the the lower side of the fillet. Mm. Robo. Yeah. Should there be should there be a fillet here, or does this yes. cove start? For, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. How you going there, Adam? Uh, well, I hope that's it. Okay, now, this part here is called a swell, or it will be by the time I finish it. This part down here is called a hollow. So, with your skew chisel, get rid of any weight down there to start blending it into the cove. I'll go on full screen again for a second. Now, the original leg that I had to copy was virtually straight down like that. It looked terrible from a design point of view. So, as I said a couple of last week, I actually altered the design by doing this to it. So you start curving back in up there. So two movements.
and bring it in to the base of the toe. Now where it curves here, it should be just underneath the edge of the cove there. Like so. Bloody up. Just watch out, you don't undercut them. <laughs> I don't undercut what, sorry? The swell up there. It's got to yes. be a continuous curve. So you've got a sharp line there? It's got a flat on the top. But yeah, shouldn't have. Alright, I'll... Uh, so, I want to decide where my flat start. Right, okay. Now, Rob, in the middle of that, you should be starting to take a lot out of there and then back off the cut as you come towards the bottom, all right, towards the tail stock to get this curve down here. And believe it or not, this is the best chisel for doing that, side, that shape. The skew chisel is the best one for doing that because the gouge leaves nothing but lines down it. Yeah, that's not bad, Adam. Just, it needs rounding off a little bit more. Up yeah. there, yeah, right yeah. where your finger is. Yeah. All right, just, just stop for a minute. Right. You see this thing on the end of a end of a chisel is called a handle. Well, yep. Relax. When you're using the skew, relax your hands a bit. Trust me, you are not going to squeeze any more moisture out of that unless you're a tax agent. 
So just hold it lightly. Like this uh, camera's not that far enough, but I quite often hold it just between two fingers when I'm demonstrating so that people can see how lightly you have to hold it to cut. If you push too hard, you get that rattling sound which is bouncing over the grain. So you just glide the bevel or caress it. You don't rub the bevel, which a lot of people advocate, but you just glide along. Okay, finish them off for there. That's it, Rob. Just imagine you, you're digging a, like a, a big cove in there, all right? That's starting to look better. Don't take any more out of there yet. Come right back to the top again, or close to the top. Just round that bit over first, up here. Right, now increase your cut. The depth of cut, I mean. Right, now start decreasing it. Right, don't take quite as much out now down in the centre. Make your cut down into there and then start blending it in down near the cove at the base. That needs to be a little bit rounder up there yet. Can you hear the rain, can you? It's absolutely teeming down there. Yeah, I can hear it. wondered what it was. I thought it was interference, Robo, to be fair. <laughs> no, it's raining like hell, actually. And unfortunately, wow. this part of the, where I am, I'm right on the edge of an uninsulated, unmined part of the building. So, of course, I hear it on the tin roof. Getting some nice curlies off there, at, uh, Rob. Right, now come up a little bit higher, Rob, up towards about where your knuckles are there. Don't worry about that part. Yeah, about there. Start your curve, just come a little bit towards the headstock from there. Yep. And then do one cut all the way down to get a curve into it. So you've got to start, start flat, don't take much out, increase the cut, and then decrease it as you're going down. They're all happy in the chat, are they, Sid? Jay? And, uh, um, Justin and Chris Finningwood Dodge are organising a party with sausage rolls and beer. Um, and Jay's been putting links in for everyone's channel. 
And right. there's lots of lots of good chat going on in there. I'm not sure whether they're watching you at all. They seem to be just organising a party. All oh, right. Well, <laughs> probably probably more exciting than this. Oi. I know you're talking about the weather, but I didn't think you were bored. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not bored. <laughs> I just want an invite to the party if there's one being organised. <clears throat> yeah, you can bring you can bring the bat and ball, Adam. All right, brother. You make that look so easy. Yep. It's so difficult. I've got loads of um I think it's a double touching too hard. So there's loads of yeah, um yeah. like loads of bumps and stuff. This nuts appear in the butt. Uh nice. Nice. Oh, and I think I went too thin on there. That that's all right. Look. Considering you probably never made cuts like that, you're not going too bad, Alright, thank you. We got a rule here, Adam. Though you have to hold a beer in one hand and bat with the other, and you can't spill the beer. All right. <laughs> okay. Now all we got left to do is the foot. Now, the way you do that is like this. Yeah, that's... A, yeah, it still needs... A, don't worry about it now, Rob, but it needs a little bit more rounding out here. See how you've got a flat section across the... Yeah. From the first B? Yes, I see. But don't worry about that now. Now, I'm going to let you off the hook easy, easy here. Yeah? <laughs> right, get, Using your spindle, spindle gouge, you're going to put a half feed in here. Just watch. Half feed in here. Now. Take it down. Like so. Until it's about 20 mil. And then you put a little chamfer on the edge here. Now, you come back up to here and take this corner off. So it goes like that. Okay, try that. the sauce again there, Sid. <laughs> it's going to be shaped. Adam, you're coming back too far. You're coming back too far. It's like an onion. In fact, that's what it's called, an onion. Okay. No, Well, I'm unsure about the shape. Do I, do I need to make yes. more of a curve? A, a yes. curve in there. Yeah. Yep, that's it. This is a specific variety of onion called the Jackson. All right. <laughs> but, um, no, no, I, can't, I can't put it back on, can I? So um, I guess I have to live with no. what it is now. If you invent that, you, you'll make a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Reverse. There's a challenge for you, Adam. Get, get inventing. 
Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, well, on, you just right on. <coughs> you're just repeating all the, the shape again. You're just making it deeper and deeper and deeper rather than getting more of a curve into it. But that's just practice. Right. Now this is about this is about the only time through this tuition that you'll see sanding, all right? <laughs> now the important thing with spindle turning is to maintain these sharp sharp edges. That's what that's what denotes good turning. Which machines can't duplicate, or very cheap machines can't duplicate. So to do your coves and things, I roll the sandpaper up like that. You start down in the inside and work up to the lip. If you go over the top, you're going to round it out. So on this one on the bars there, come up there, start at the bottom down here, and come up there. Then you can do the rest of it. This just gets rid of any little chisel marks or anything out of it. And as you were talking about before, it also allows the finishers to get a finish on it. So do they now have to make another three of those? Right. Do they now have to make another three of those? Yeah. Before they can go home. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, we only have to make one more, right? Because we can make a three-legged table and I can send one of either Rob or I could send ours to each other. Or, Robbo, you could, we could send ours to Australia and you could build a table, right? <laughs> I, I don't think Robbo would want to mine. Straight in the Straight in the way No, my mate. We make Rob's can be the finial then, hey? How about that? And Adam's is shorter than everyone else, so it won't be a won't be a level table. Look, I've told you about making jokes like that. Right. Okay. You can you can sand it off if you like. Uh, there's no point for me because I've got such a bad finish. I've also got tear out on the um, fillet down here. And this yeah. is so bad, I would need. Well, if 40, you, yeah, don't 40. worry about it then, Rob. Yeah, okay. You can sand it if you like. I'm, nice. I'm good as well, Robbo. I like, what, I like right the out. shapes, I like the design, um, but I will have to try it again. Um, yeah. I think this is. Uh, I'm quite happy with it, right. actually. The shapes. Yeah. Rob and I were talking the other night and he said, How fast do I do these? So I'm about to show you. <laughs> Just hold on a second. I've got to uh, tighten the tool. Go, go full screen, too, Robbo. Yeah. Go so full screen. Mate. Yeah, go full screen, mate. Yeah. 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 This is how quick you have to make your next one, guys, right? <laughs> if they're right if I can find the centre off. Do I need to worry about this first? <laughs> yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 
Sí. A joy to watch Crazy Awesome when you take into account that every shape's awesome. <laughs> wow. Four and a half minutes, I caught. Yeah. Yeah, I'm down. Four, four minutes, 48.25 seconds from when the wood started spinning. For me to get that shape, take three, four hours. All right. Now, slight change of pace. What we're going to be making is this, an acorn box, all right? Like so. <laughs> He's not going to help you, Rob. What size piece, what size piece of wood, Robbo? Uh, that, it should be your 70 70 by 1 forward 160 long. Pulled <laughs> out some rubbish here. Good enough. Don't want to be looking at myself. Get it down around. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hey, Robbo, do you want to centre your camera a little bit more? Oh, yeah. Deal. I actually moved it the right way. Put a tenon on each end. Yep. Put a tenon on each end for your chuck. In my case, it's 50 millimeters, so. No questions or anything yet, Sid? Can't hear you. You're muted. That's better. Uh, Darren asked if you had four bits of wood to do a matching set of legs in eight minutes. You'd have to have at least one pup in between each of them legs, wouldn't you? That would take 10 seconds, wouldn't it? <laughs> All right, no, leave it in there, leave it in there yet. Rob, just, oh. Uh, no. Rightio, what chuck have you got, Rob? I'm just going to have to round it. Right. Now, radio. You got your tendons on each end of you, Adam? Yeah. I've still got a bit of flat on the right. wood, but I'm going to leave it. You're right. right. No, that's all right. We can make it a bit smaller. Right. Yeah. Now, I think that's a copy of a Technotool chuck, Rob. Now, if you have a look at the inside of the jaws, uh, Adam, I think it might be. Just... It's um, an <coughs> Axminster SK80. It has the um, little lip on the inside of the jaws. 
Yeah, Saint right. George is the name. Right now, on yours, the jaws go. Let's see. I'll just zoom it in a bit if I can. Right. So here's the outside of your jaw there. The inside is parallel, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it's parallel. The inside with a is lip. parallel. Yes. And, and then it's got a little a little lip. It's got yeah, it's got a little nib on the bottom there, right. Yes. Now, when you're making a tenon for that, it's just dead straight like you've made it there. Yes. And do not put, like a lot of people, put, and I'm going to probably get into trouble there, but bad luck. If people read the instructions, there wouldn't be any problem. I'll just put a tenon on those. Adam, what are you doing there? Um, right. I'm picking up If you haven't got enough for everybody, don't have any at all. It's coming through the speakers and everything. Right. 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 Now, a lot of people put a little groove down in the end there to take that little lip around the outside of the chuck. Don't ever do that. If you read the instructions, that little groove is to pull it into the into the chuck tighter. It doesn't actually hold and holds it a little bit, but it's to make sure you pull it up against this face here. Now you've got to always make sure, no matter which chuck it is, but this face is dead flat so that you can see it against the face of the jaws. That's where you get your most support from. Right, now, Adam, let's have a look at yours for a minute. What well, have you got, a big mark? Well, uh, VM120. Yeah, right. Okay. Now, the dovetail that you put on the end there is too steep. Okay. On the end of your timber there. The dovetail is too steep. It will only be gripping, and I'll just do it here, just to show you. Well, I've got to put one on this end anyway. If you have it like that, if you have it like that, it's only going to bear against this outside edge around here. It won't seat down in there properly. It's actually eight degrees as a as a bevel angle on is a dovetail angle on that. So it should look like about that. Okay. Right, so cool. I'll just put the tenons on these properly now. tenon on that other end, Adam, or not? Yeah, I've done it. I've, I've made them uh, slightly <laughs> less uh, of an angle on both ends. Right, yeah, you can take your timber out now. If you've got your dove, uh, you've got your tenons on each end. Pull the tail sock back and take the take the centre out of it, so you don't put your elbow into it. Take the dive spur out. 
and fit up the top. Didn't really set my calipers, did I? Nah. No, they're still on 40 mil. <clears throat> yeah. Dip. There, you, there you go. The teacher's not an alien after all. Yeah, but normally he doesn't have to talk to aliens, does he? still set up before everyone else is. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, Darren said something in the chat, but I'm not really sure if I want to repeat it. it, it should you be telling everyone that, Darren? <laughs> It, it may have been another one of those what she said moments. Oh. What tools do we need, Robbo? Sorry? What tools do you want us to... Uh, spindle guard, pencil and ruler first, skew chisel as well at the moment. Cool. Mine's definitely longer than yours, Robbie. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know, do I need to... Doesn't matter. <laughs> Not by much. Do I need me a tail stuck in? Sorry. Sorry, I was just, I, I seen, I seen your picture and I seen you had your tail stuck in and I got worried that I need my tail stuck. I've put my tail stuck out. Yeah, no, 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 don't have to bring the tail stuck in if you put it in. I'm just remaking the tannins because I, I I'm see. using them. Yes, yeah. Because I mucked it up. Yeah, no problem. So I'm just putting a proper tendon on each end for the chuck that I'm using. But that's still big enough, should be. Right. Okay, ruler and pencil, first off. From the headstock end, 
where you've got the, the full diameter, mark 30 millimetres. Is that, the line is, that right is, around. It, is that 30 mils from the jaws or just 30 mils from no, where you want to start? 30 mils from the round from the round part here from the front of the jaws okay yeah not from the the chuck or anything all right so could i start a little bit in if i wanted to just to give myself some room uh, sorry could i start in a little bit if i wanted to give myself some room is that okay no you don't no just make it make it 30 mil you'll be right all right that's only 10 mil I'm just marking, working out where I'm marking to. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Now you're going to part them off there. Yeah? So on the waist side of the line to put your, your mark in. Come to the off side of it. Now. <laughs> now, if you feel uncomfortable parting a right off rock while you're doing that, just stop the light and break it off. Right. Now, just watch the screen for a minute, please. Whenever you're parting off a free end, when you start getting down towards the centre there, Adam. Yeah. When you're getting down near the free end, where when you turn parting off free end, put a bit of backward pressure like that, because what will happen is that it'll bind on the chisel otherwise, and it's likely to whip off the thing and hit you. Now. If you've got the end supported by your tail stock, then it's prudent to back the tail stock off a little bit so that it doesn't get jammed between the, the parting tool, doesn't get jammed in the two thing over there. Right. Now what you're going to do is face this off, and I'll change cameras now. That's the finish of parting tool you use. So using your spindle gouge. Just clean up that face there. Robert, do you want any measure? Do you, no. want me to, do you want me to change my camera angle so you can see the front? No, no. All right. No, it's all right. I'm not. I can sort of see what you're, you're doing. Just hold on a second. That's a great camera, that, Robbo. It's very, very clear, sharp. Yeah, they're all. They're proper video cameras, they're not webcams. 
Yeah, it's awesome. Okay. Now, set some vermeers if you have them. Or what you're going to do is put a 50 mil ring around here. So, now remember, whenever you're using vernier calipers, always keep this wing out back from the, the work. So you're only operating on this, on the downward wing to get the size. And make sure that's on the centre. I've got to try and keep my hands out of the way there. Alright, get it up to there, please. Lobo, was that measurement 50 millimetres? Yeah, well, un unfortunately, it depends on whether you've taken too much off this, off the That's major nice. diameter or not. So what I'm after is about a 10 mil, is about a 10 mil annulus around the, the outside of that, all right? Okay, mine's uh, 64 This is only to teach you how to use the calipers or the verniers the right way around. Like under normal circumstances, I would have just come in on one side and marked in 10 mil with a pencil yeah. and just put it in there. Yeah. Right, how you going there, Rob? I cleaned up the face and I've put the uh, vernier gauge okay. mark on. Right out. Now, just watch for a second again. What we're going to do is hollow this out a bit now, but inside this line here, all right? So you can come you can come out to that line. You want to? Just put a slight dip in it. Like so. Then get your stew chisel and using it as a scraper. Right, I've just got to take the tail stop center out. You're going to go straight in here. About three or four millimetres deep. So get it up to there, all right?
Don't forget to move the chisel. Once you've got it into your depth, Rob, move it across the face. Right now, if you want to keep keep this, you can put some decoration inside that curved bit or sand it up and everything else. You can finish it off if you like <coughs> in there. What's the depth of the recess, Robbo, would you recommend in terms of the shelf that's on the inside? Sorry? What's the depth of the shelf, the recess that you've got that's flat, the flat piece on the inside? About three, about three to four millimetres. All right, that's cool. Oops, it's Right, we finishing them in there or not? Yeah, I'm done. What are you doing, Adam? Um, I was just marking which chuck jaws were either side of my grip or my tenon, if just in case we were taking it off and putting it back on. No, we aren't. That's all. You either finished. This is the lid, so you're doing the inside of the lid at the moment, all right? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I do boxes a little bit different than everybody else. Uh, 
that outside diameter should be bigger than the piece of timber. It should be the same size as that offcut, I hope. Or well, we're going to run into real problems. Right. Yeah, just make sure you get the right end in there. Yeah, don't worry about don't worry about whether there's a little bit of a gap or not. It's all good. At the moment. Right. We finished that part, have we? Yep. Yes. Right. Okay. Now, I'll put myself on overhead on the big screen again. So just watch. Now, most people, when they're making a lid, do the lid afterwards and then fit it onto the box. I make the lid first and fit the box to the lid. But and what they what they do is when they do a cut. They generally try to go straight in like that. If it's not quite big enough, they generally try to go in like this, just straight in to widen it out. I'm not going to do it on this one. I might do it on the outside. Just so as you see. Just go back a bit with the camera. So they go in like this. And invariably, Nine times out of ten, that suddenly ends up too big. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't fit the box properly. Yeah. Now, what I do is I use this part of the skew chisel, the shoulder. Now, you've got to tilt it up on its side, and you've got to get this face here straight, straight down. Now, the reason I use the skew chisel is because it's so narrow across here, and this is a cutting edge if you, as a scraper, and you put it in the centre there. I'll just change cameras again now. So you lift your breast up to close to centre height. Long point in. You bring it inside, inside the circle and slide it out like that. And you can just about dial in the thing. You don't, you're not removing a lot of material with it. I can see the bust on the end of the, the chisel there. Yeah. Now, Wayne, the wood turner, uses a parting tool. I, I don't like using a parting tool. I'll tell you why. Now, Wayne uses this edge on his parting tool. Sorry. This edge here. He does the same thing. He slides it out. But the problem with a parting tool, if you do not get it exactly right, it actually forces a taper down inside because of the width across here. So that's why I use a skew chisel, because you've only got that little titchy bit on the end. And if you've got a skew chisel that's got the rounded edges, that's even better. So you just get it into there, and you can clean it all up and everything. And this inside lip down in here, make sure it's just tapered, make sure it's just tapered in a little bit, all right? Right, like so. So give that a try. Robbo, you you've understand? Been, you've been going You're, for an hour and 42 minutes. Yeah, I know. Do you understand that? Yeah, I think so. Adam? Yeah, I think right. so. So just practice it. You've got to tilt the you've got to tilt the chisel up. Yeah, I've got it. I've got the dust. Obviously, that must be scraping it, right? Because it's coming off. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. right. And it'll leave generally it'll leave a pretty good finish because you're not taking much off it. Yeah. Right.
Now, next part. What you're going to do is put a, a half bead on this corner. Now, I'll let you off. You can use a gouge if you like. I can use so come a back about. Come back about 10 mil. Oh, Bloody mouth is sensitive on this. So, Robbo. Uh, you're off. Camera's off. Mm. Can't, can't see your tool rest. That's it. So, I come back about 10 mil or so. Yep. And do a bead and leave a little bit on this edge here. So, it looks like. I'll just show you what I'm. So yeah, you've got a circle around there. Make sure you leave that on. Okay. Rob, Landy's just put a question in the message when you're talking about the taper on the inside lip. You said tapered how? So a little bit of an explanation there. Right. I'll draw it. That's the easiest way. So. This is the outside edge of your lid here with the thing up now. With a half covert and a half feed in it. You're on the wrong camera yeah, for that drawing, Robert. Oh, yeah, sorry. Right, so you've got your lid coming here like that. It goes in like that. Then it's hollowed out in here like that. And there's a little bit of a flat just in here. That tapers that way, back towards the the centre. Does that make sense, Landy? There'll be a little delay there, I guess. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right, if you're finished with that lid now, you can take it out and just put it aside and put the other piece of timber in. Does everyone see this is going to run out of mile, I reckon? I don't know. Right, Can you yeah. take it off the split screen, please? Take it off, yeah. Yeah, just overhead will do. Okay, no, not face on. Yeah, okay. Audio. No. That's fine for demonstration. That's fine for demonstrations, but when I'm trying to see what you're doing, give me a sec. Right, that's good. Right, so make sure it's running through down in the the chuck, even if you've got to turn it off a little bit. I have got to turn off a little bit in the end because I've made the tenon too long on mine. Rookie mistake. <clears throat> so I just need to turn the top of that, the bottom of it off. Oh, that'll put it in the saw. 
Oh, that's probably easier. Oh, wait on Rob. Rod, what are you doing? Just wait a minute. That's running pretty true, I think. Sorry. <laughs> Do you know, um, maybe can I put these stands low? Uh, I can't hear you. Right, sorry. Go ahead. Um, I, I messed up, basically. I, I, I got my fence low down, and I don't know if that was causing it. Basically, I was aiming the chisel in too far, and I was trying to just... Yeah, just... It no, it's, it's looking all right. If you go too far, you're going to have nothing yeah. left to work with. Yeah. Right, what's next then, Robbo? Right. Rob's, Rob's moving, I can trim, see that. But... Trim, <coughs> trim, trim the end so it's flat and cleaned up from your, where you part of the rock. Okay. Who's pinched them? So oh, I found it. Now get your verniers and measure the inside of inside of that groove. All right. And then mark the end of the Now, just stopping short of that line, use your parting tool. And just, just make a lip about a quarter of an inch wide. Robbo, quick question. On this kind of yeah. parting tool that has the, the nose, you know, the thin, no, drop, the thin drop, tool. Drop it down a bit. Yeah. The thin tool with the yeah, nose. You, How do you sharpen yeah. it? Do you sharpen the bottom edge up or what's the... What? Is that a... Is that a uh, that's missing part of it, I reckon. That's a Sorby one, isn't it? No, this is the crown thin parting tool, and it has yeah, right. a it has a bit of a, a nose cut on the bottom of it. Yeah, well, the nose a... needs to be the nose needs to be a bit longer. Most of them are about ten millimeters long on that bottom part, and you just sharpen it like a normal parting tool. Okay.
Hey, you got on there, Rob. <laughs> so, have we gone straight in on that? Have you gone straight in on that, Robbo? Yeah. Okay, cool. No, no, not in on the end, right? On the side. Okay. You're actually putting a ten. You're putting a tenon on to fit the lid. Yep. Sorry, I misunderstood what you meant. Just wait a second, Rob. It's a bit wider than the mark, but that's the same as yours. Right out now. On this edge here, the inside one that you've just made, get your skew chisel, and I'll go onto the overhead camera, I think, so as you can see it. No. Ah, bugger it. Right. Now, do not take any off this side here. What you're going to do is put a slight dovetail like this on it, or a chamfer. Yeah. Does that go all the way to the shoulder of the... You've got to make sure that you keep one section a little flat up near the... Perfect, all right. ...the bulk got of it. the timber. Got it, thanks. I thought that's what you said. Okay, you got that done? Right, now get your lid and see if it fits into the base of the chamfer and holding it square, just put a little bit of pressure on it. Yeah. What speed you got your lathe running at, Robo? Yeah, oh, I don't know. Turning speed. <laughs> Now, did it fit over the chamfer? No. Well, now. <coughs> Robo, I, yeah. I pushed a happy left woman. And I pushed this on. Yes. Um, I can't see where it's. Where it's there should not. be. A, there should be a shiny mark or a little burn line on it. Oh. I, I'll try running the lathe a little bit faster to see if that helps. Yeah. Try. Try putting a bit more pressure on it, Rob. But don't okay. put too much because it'll start chattering. Okay. Cool. 
if you have a look at the if you have a look at the screen so i've got a little burn mark right about there yeah yes i have it i can go back and zoom in oh, that's as much as i can zoom i've got a little burn mark right on the end right okay now using your skew tool flatten off the the thing until you get down to that line or nearly that line all right this is where we start getting techo <laughs> Don't force it in like that, it's on touch like a maiden's kiss. Adam, what are you doing, please? I'm cutting down to the black line. No, the line should be on the... You should be coming in from the outside, not... Bam. Which way? You should be coming in there. Have a look at the screen. Should be coming in from this way. Uh, okay, so we were to leave the tenon. Okay, okay. Oh, yes, yes, yes. The tenon's to do the lid. It's a seal on the lid. So have you got the lids attached to your main body now? Yes. Ah, I haven't got that yet. Okay, catch up. <sighs> I'll have to redo a bit, I think, by the look of this. Yeah, I'll do. Robo, yeah. At the moment, at the moment, my tenon is a, a bit too long, so there's a gap. That's that's all right. That's where it's supposed to be at the moment. That's it. It looks like it's a good fit too, is it, Rob? Yes, I'm going to pretend I did that on purpose. Right. No, I'll leave it. Yeah. Make it back on there. Oh dear. Oh, is it a bit loose, Rob? Yeah, don't turn it round. Just leave it like that. It's got to be a good jam fit. And might be a bit loose. All right, we'll just cut if, if you like. Be, cut. Yeah, sorry. Take take another ten and about an eighth of an inch or so long. Yeah. Down beside that one, but don't go quite as deep. And make sure hey, you get it in. Yeah. That's Landy's. Oh yeah, you're going well, Landy. Good. Nice work, Landy. Okay, we're there. <clears throat> so make your tenon again, and you can soon slice that end one off, all right, once you've got the other one down to the size. But make sure it's a fraction bigger than the one you've got on there now, so as you can dial it in.
Right, how are you going there, Adam? Well, I've got the I've got the lid. Right, is it a nice firm fit? Yeah. Right, good. Now this is a proper jam chuck. Means exactly what it says. You've got to jam it on. And in the early days before chucks and things, we actually we actually used to turn 12-inch poles on something like this, just jammed into a piece of timber. Oh, Rob's getting now doing an end cut with the skew tool. Whoopee! <coughs> right, just give it a thump even if it's a bit tight, Rob. Looks like it should be fairly good. Yeah, that's good. Rightio. Is it square or not? Rightio, just get it square. <coughs> uh, just take a fraction more off if it's too tight. Or just taper the tenon a little bit. It's looking pretty good from where I am. Right. Okay, now what you're going to do now is form the lid. So, spindle gouge. This will tell whether it's tight enough. Just take gentle cuts. Start turning up the lid. does pay to put more a slight bit of bevel pressure on the lid to stop it from flicking off so you make the lid whatever shape you like some acorns have little pets on them some are flat doesn't matter the important part is to get this part here right where it's a nice little rounded over shape you make it as thick or as thin as you like We had any fly off yet? How's Landy going in the background there? She just sent a message through. Can you show the finished lid again, please? Sorry? Can Robbo show us the finished lid again, please? That's from Landy. Yeah, you make it as thin as you like. Finished. Right, there you go. Just 
Don't come too far back without rounding over that edge, Rob, down in here. Otherwise, you're just going to have a flat section on it. Well, maybe Landy meant that lid. I don't know. But that's all it is. Now the fun part, trying to get it back off again. If you're happy with that, you're going to sand it up, all right? When you've got that done, you can take the lids off the base if you like. Don't remove the bit of wood out of the chuck. Just take the lids off the chuck, off the bit of wood. Rightio. Now we get to the fun bit. Pulling out the inside. Just wait a second.
Now, what we're going to do is make them like an egg inside. As if you can imagine the profile of an egg, it's got to be like that inside. So, now this is the way I do it. I don't drill a hole down there. I just use my gouge. Now, <laughs> put a line down about uh, 50 mil or so, all right? Now you make it a bit longer if you like, Rob, on yours. You can go two and a half inches, same on yours, Adam. Made about 60 mil. Two and a half inches roughly. Close enough. Right. Change cameras again. Now, remember this tenon here is longer than what the lid is deep. Don't worry about that too much at the moment. You'll see why in a minute. Right. Now, as I said, I don't worry about drilling holes. I just use my gouge. So you come across, form a little hollow, but it gets into the centre there. Take it off your bevel and generally take it in. And just pull it. And then you can start hollowing out the inside. Now, when you're cutting, you're cutting just off there and you're coming out. So basically it's this hand that's doing the work. You're pulling with it. But you've got to get the handle right over that way so this wing here doesn't hit. Okay? And don't come out past this edge here, it should be about a sixteenth of an inch or a millimetre. So we just put a line in there just to make sure. Okay? So you can come out to that line there. Now, another way to do the hollowing, and I, I don't teach this because it can be a bit dangerous. So as you come in here, like this down here, and then you come up over the top. That was a cut made uh, the Richard Raffin way of hollowing out things. But the important thing to remember is that this bevel must be in contact the whole time when it's coming up over the top here. And the exit is around about 2 o'clock, about 1 or 2 o'clock. So, like I say, it's a cut I don't teach for the simple reason that I actually have to guide your hands when I'm doing it. So, just hollow it out the way you feel comfortable, all right? Away you go. No, don't start right on the outside, Rob. Remember, you've got to keep that line on the inside. Otherwise, you'll have nothing to attach the lid to. Put 
push it, Rob. Shove it in. Max force. Otherwise, all you do is overheat the tool. Now you got the idea. Question, please, Rubber. Um, All right. Yep. How 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 deep do I go with the the hunt? Do I, I must to okay. go to this line? Yeah. I'm only if you, there no, at you the moment. No. Yeah, you can go a little bit deeper. About just fifty about fifty mil or so. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's about yeah. <laughs> Right, how are you going there, Adam? Yeah, good mate. I'm done, I think. I'm about 55 mil down, something like that. Right. 50 mil down. Okay, good. And slightly now, egg-shaped on the inside. Was that right? Is that what we want? Sorry. Slightly it should be, about, should be about one. It should be about one millimetre wide around that yeah. tenon. Yeah. Now, you probably need to use a round nose scraper to clean it out in there because in most cases it ends up pretty rough. It's not too bad, but it's... Uh... You can sand the inside of it if you like, if you want to do that. So Rex has put a question in, Robbo. Do you want the one millimetre yep. tenon to be angled in or out on the side? Uh, well, it's it's sort of angled because you're um, on the inside because it's it's like a like a big U inside, like an egg. Imagine drawing an egg. It's the same shape in there as what an egg is. And so I thin at the bottom. Straight. Yeah. 
and it's not parallel with the sides. We're starting to make this parallel now. So if you've taken too much out of there and parallel with the side, Adam, you're going to be in trouble. No, I'm good. So does it look like an egg inside? Well, yes. Right, good. We'll find out in about five minutes, I reckon. It's, it's narrower towards the bottom as it is to the top, so... Right. Uh, okay. How are you going there, Rob? <coughs> to be fair, it's acorn-shaped, I would say, not egg-shaped. <laughs> well, it, yeah, but it's egg-shaped inside, basically. <laughs> Did I answer Rex's question, Sid? Yes, he said thank you, so I'm going to get to the dish. Right. Okay, now, measure. I always use my gauge that I've got around. With your finger, measure the depth and then put a line, put a line in where the end is where the base is. <clears throat> right. You right there, Adam? Yeah. Okay. Now come about 12 millimetres or half an inch under that line towards the headstock and start making a V-cut in there. It's got to go down until it's about an inch thick on the um, actual main part, all right? That's about it, Rob. Yeah, that's okay for a moment. Now, you could do that cut with a parting tool if you want to. The reason I make you do it with a skew is so you can get practice doing it with a skew. And it leaves much cleaner sides on it. Right. Now, using your gouge, your spindle gouge, we're going to take this diameter here down very close to that diameter there on the tenon, all right? Now make sure that you don't cut into the tenon. Okay. And don't hollow, don't, 
I make a hollow cut, it's got to be flat at the moment. This is all practice. Not the way I normally do it, but... About a millimeter off the tenon. Do you want me to go further? Half a mil? What? Where? On the sides. So I'm about half a mil off. About a millimeter off the tenon. Yeah. No. Just take it down flush with it. All right. All right. Flush, flush with the tenon. Rob, a little trick is to straighten up your tool rest parallel with the bars of the lathe, or the bed of the lathe, so you can get a straight cut. Okay. You're there. <clears throat> Just check. Yeah. Right, okay. Right, take the lid off. Right, now you're going to start forming the, the acorn shape, all right? And just remember that an acorn is nearly parallel down the sides until it gets down near the bottom and then it rounds over. Like that. So it's a very tight bead at the end. Adam, yeah. move your tool rest out a little bit and extend it past the end. It's too easy to run off the end of the rest like that. The tool rest should be at least an inch past where you're finishing. Cool. If you want to see a massive catch, run off the end of the tool rest. Very good, Rob. Right, now you can lightly sand that up. Don't sand too much, because otherwise you'll destroy where the lid goes on. Thank you. 
on these. It has to be a firm, it has to be a firm fitting lid because it doesn't stand up. It lays on its side. Do you have any school of thought on boxes in general, Robbo, as whether they need to have tight lids or lids that lift off, etc.? Depends on what they're being used for. I prefer, yeah. like, if it's for galleries, then a firm fitting lid, the pop. For wood turning shows, it's got to be a pop lid. But for real people, it's got to be a loose lid that you can lift off with one hand. Yeah. Now, when we stop in a second, I'll show you what we used to use them for, or what they were sold for. Right, you are right there, Rob? Right, this was the actual size that we used to do. They're only an inch tall. This wasn't turned by me, this was turned by a friend of mine called Jim McConaughey, and the lid is actually screwed on. Now, we used to sell them to a lot of women for carrying tablets in. And they put them in their handbag so you can imagine that they've got to have a firm lid, otherwise they just come off. So the purpose has to suit what you're going to do with it. That's basically it. It must suit the function for which it's been designed. Rightio. Now we're going to take this off here. Now, I was going to get you to make a jam chuck with this piece still in here, but we're, we've been going for two, two and a half hours now. So we'll just take it off with the skew chisel, all right? So make the cuts deeper down here. So you've got the leaf. Using a long point, follow the curve around. enough room Adam take another cut off the piece up near the headstock thank you <coughs> you've always got to have clearance for chisels to go into Right. Just well, so you know, mine's a, sorry, I was just going to say, sorry. I was just going to say, mine's a bit of a mess. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's all right. 
It looks like an acorn and it's close to it. Uh, as Mr. Great says, I know you're being served. You have done very, very well. Thank you, Rebel. Thank you very much. No worries at all. Is that awesome, Nelson? I'll tell you something. Everybody Man. in the chat, try one of those table legs. <laughs> yeah, they're good exercise, actually. Okay, I'm going to shut her down, folks. Good stuff. Cheers, Robbo. Cheers, Sid. Cheers, no Jay. Cheers, Rob. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Before I close it down, how did you get on, Landy? Yep, so she had a question there before about the, how close to the tenon at the lid. She got that it was flush. Just wait for her to... <laughs> so I've overcome the technological hitches with a with a bit of parallel turning. Yeah, it's a bit hard, I must admit. So have you got it done or not? I just <laughs> haven't got a response yet. Oh, yeah. Are you on Instagram? What's your Instagram name? No, no, I'm not. Oh, right. okay. <laughs> took me took, took me long enough to work out how the hell to do Facebook. Fair enough. <laughs> so Landy's responded all good. Mm -hmm. Ah, good. Right here. All right. Thank you all for attending, and. Uh, Hope it's been interesting. I know it's been a long one, but most of mine are, unfortunately. Well, um, it, might, it might not be here. Sorry? That's all right. It's all good. Right. Okay. Going to close it down. Good night. Stay safe, everybody. See you all. Cheers, guys.